It's a throwback Thursday, and that's an old one from Lionel Richie. Hello there. Good morning. This is the AM show. Mapito CBD just brought us the AM news. Now it's time for us to look at the newspapers. Benjamin Akako is off around town. And so Joseph Akable is joining me via Zoom so we can uh, do the newspapers. There you are, Joseph. Good morning. And this is... Hello, Joe. Okay, uh, it's either. Okay, I think there's a challenge uh, connecting the sound. Uh, so we're going to work on that. In the meantime, I'll just let you know the papers that we have in the studio. We've got the Daily Graphic newspaper. We have the Chronicle, the Business and Financial Times, the Business Finder, the Daily Guide, the Daily Statesman newspaper, and the Ghanaian Times newspaper. Whilst we try to resolve the challenge with a sound connecting to Joseph Akable. Okay, I understand Akable is back now. Joseph. Hello, Amabi. Somebody doesn't want you on the show. <laughs> can you hear me now? I can, loud and clear. You're good? I'm good. How about you? I'm very well, thank you. Yesterday, there was rather very heavy rains, and I don't know if you felt it where you were. Yes, uh, I was I was home, but I had to go to town at some point to do something. So I was caught up in it. There was a lot of traffic in town, especially on the N1. And so it took a long time for me to be able to get home eventually. And mm. so, yes, I felt it. And even this morning, driving to work, some parts of the road were, have been flooded, I mean, by the rain from yesterday. And so it, it's still a challenge. I learned a lesson yesterday. When it's raining, I don't have to move. I just have to stay where, where I am because... A lot of the areas that I did not know before uh, got flooded yesterday. And it was very surprising to me. There were cars that were stuck in it. Uh, and, and it was just crazy. It was unbelievable. Very scary at some point for me. And I didn't want to stop because I was already on the road. Yeah, I mean, I think generally that has been the advice by the experts always. Except that a lot of the time, the rain just it catches us on our way. You're already in, in move and it happens. But, I mean, always the advice is that if there's a safe location where you can stop, so that once it subsides, then you move, it's always better. Now, that's the problem. Safe location. How do you identify and know that the place Good is Good one. Safe? And if you remember the circle disaster at Ground Zero, a lot of those people had gone to take shelter at the fuel station. That's had the explosion taking place eventually. Mm -hmm. And so that's also another major issue. That's why a lot of people tend to rush onto the road to try and get to him and it ends up worsening the traffic situation. Yeah. Wager Kaswa was on my mind though because yesterday I drove through uh, that whole traffic and rain and flood and I was thinking it was just Saturday. Isn't it going to get worse after yesterday's rains? It is. And the worrying thing about that particular road, we've done the stories many times. Benjamin was there. Maxwell Agba has been there many times. The runoff water washes sand onto the road. So it covers more than half of the road. And so it, it, it becomes on more trouble. So they have to now use just a quarter of the road. And that also is a major challenge. And it's been on for years. I, I, I really don't see why we are unable to find a lasting solution to that particular situation. Yeah. Well, let's look at the papers now. I'm not sure the papers would capture the rains yesterday and the kind of, uh, uh, you know, the, the flooding situation that we're talking about this morning. Uh, but what papers are you doing, Joseph? I have uh, the Business Finder. I also have the Chronicle with me. So those are the two that I'll do for now. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, let's start off with the Ghanaian Times newspaper then. On the front page, we'll build on gains, reforms that got Ghana delisted from FATF, uh, finance, according to the finance minister. And this is the, uh, the money laundering situation that the finance minister is addressing. I'll just cross-check that for you on page 18 in the Ghanaian Times newspaper. Uh, the Financial Action Tax Force, grey lists they call it. Uh, so government has pledged to consolidate and build on the gains of the reforms that got the country removed from that grey list. It follows the delisting of Ghana from uh, the countries perceived to have weak anti-money laundering regime. Uh, and this happened on the 23rd of June this year. Still on the front page, fight against Galamse, Lance Minister justifies burning of excavators. ITU ranks Ghana third in cybersecurity development in Africa. And the big one for us, this has been our running story. Very 
Uh, the, our top story, really, the Girac killings. President orders probe, ask Interior Ministry to conduct public inquiry. So the three persons who have died, died for what reason, really? There is no justification for this. Is Ibrahim Mohammed, Muntala Mohammed, and Abdul Nasir Yusuf. Pictures of the three on the front page of the Ghanaian Times newspaper. We will return to the subject and talk about the concerns that others have, uh, why they don't have any faith at all, or they don't believe there will be any proper end, uh, especially if a probe is being conducted by the Ministry of Interior. Some say that the minister himself has un questions to answer. So does he ask himself the questions? And how is that going to go since the police really is under that ministry? So how do you supervise, oversee, and then do your own investigation and make recommendation? Uh, but calm returns to a giraffe to angry youth security personnel violent clash. Again, many are disputing that it was a clash. It was a group of people who were unhappy, very angry because a member of their community had been uh, beaten to the extent that he died and they were angry and then police just stormed the place. So many are refu re refuting that, that it, it was a violent clash. Uh, we will see whatever probe that is, uh, is conducted, we'll see if anything will come out of that. On the back page, confiscated rosewood will be given to local furniture manufacturers, according to the deputy Minister of the Lands and Natural Resources, Benito Owusu Bio. Also, three traders' associations against numerous port charges. Uh, they've reiterated concerns over uh, issues with fees charged by shipping lines at Ghana's ports, which are ostensibly increasing the cost of doing business in the country. So, at a press briefing yesterday, the Ghana Institute of Freight Forwarders, the Ghana Union of Traders' Association, and the Traders Advocacy Group of Ghana said an earlier directive by the Ministry of Transport to the Ghana Shippers Authority to resolve the issue of fees and charges imposed by shipping lines at Ghana's ports had not worked. That's what's on the back page. On page three of the same paper, uh, murder of German woman and daughter, investigator ordered to appear before court. The wager district's Court on Tuesday ordered an investigator with the Accra Regional Criminal Investigation Department, Chief Inspector Fraser Nutako, to appear before it on July 5. This is for him to explain the delay in the prosecution of the case in which a Bokinabe murdered his German girlfriend, a uh, 43-year-old woman, and her daughter, who was just 13, at Kokrubite here in Accra. So the court presided over by Ruby in Triopoku, noted that since the case was first called on October 8 last year, procedures have delayed due to constant failure of the investigator to bring accused who had no legal representation yet to court. The rest of the story is in the paper. Uh, all right, Joseph, that's it for the Ghanaian Times. Okay, so the front page of the Business Finder now, it has uh, this story about don't kill, destroy companies. I see you charges uh, workers. And Ghana of money laundering list regains confidence of investors. Also another story on the front page of the business finder. Snitch to save a $17 million to merger with National Identification Authority. Also on the front page. The front page of the Chronicle newspaper now. It has this story about the police seize 200 2,882 AK-47 bullets and M M16 rifles from suspected armed robbers and trigger happy Abongo boys in trouble and happy commander-in-chief orders probe. That is the Adria shooting that this story is on. And FATF lords Ghana's anti-money laundering policies also on the front page. The other story has to do with SNIT NIA cards to merge soon. I have actually merged mine already. I followed the short code that was announced by SNIT and I did that and so you can do yours as well. So those are the front pages of the Business Finder and the Chronicle newspaper. All right, let's do the Daily Graphic then. Uh, front page of the Daily Graphic, 22 notorious robbers wanted, 50,000 Ghana cities reward for informants. Comes with a picture of James Opon Bueno, the IGP. Will there be a shake-up or not? That's also another 
uh, trending conversation in some quarters. Levy to fund mental health advocated, delisting from money laundering, investment inflows to swell, according to Finance Minister. In Ghana ranked Africa's third in cybersecurity. Jinapot justifies burning of excavators. Uh, very coordinated headline. I think there was the Ghanaian Times and the Daily Graphic newspaper, very familiar stories. In the center spread, over 9,000 customers benefit from GCB loans. Uh, 34 individuals, companies honored at Product Awards. And then a former Deputy Minister of Food and Agriculture, Dr. Ahmed Al Hassan Yakubu, has called on Africans to use the African Continental Free Trade Area Agreement to boost agriculture. On the back page, uh, traders have begun settling at the Ajin Kotoku market as they hurry to beat today's deadline for the relocation from the Agboboloshi market. Our cameras were there yesterday. We've got cameras there today and also Ajin Kotoku. So we'll tell you the story of the relocation. But there's a group that says that, you know, essentially it needs more time. The people need more time to sell off what they have before they can relocate. That's also coming up mm -hmm. as one of our main conversations here on the show. And then Fisher for a call for livelihood support as closed fishing season starts. Joseph, did you see the fisheries minister closing the sea? Yeah, with the, with the, the big <laughs> key. I mean, the part of the video that excites me was the heated debate about whether she should turn the key <laughs> clockwise or anticlockwise. <laughs> for those of you who haven't seen it, uh, yeah, director, please kindly search for that video for us. I, I saw it on Facebook yesterday. Unbelievable. Is this something that's been happening? It sounds like it's a, uh, or it looked like it was like a tradition. The, 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 the close season has been happening, but in terms of the <laughs> pictorial <laughs> situation of locking it with a key, that, that is unusual. I've not seen that yeah, anytime soon. But no, I, no, like I said, I enjoy the debate about whether you should turn it clockwise or anti-clockwise. <laughs> I mean, they were not clear in their mind how to lock it or whether they were unlocking it, but eventually they were able to, to lock it. And so <laughs> no one will go fishing anytime soon. I like, the, I like her patience, though, because she was waiting on them to give her the direction as to lock it this way or that way. And eventually, I think it was this way, wasn't it? <laughs> so <laughs> yes, so C is locked, right? Yeah. Oh, Charlie. <laughs> yeah, Brett. Okay, that's it for the Daily Graphic. Any special stories you, you, you are interested in? In the graphic? No, I thought you were going to go through... Um, okay, no. Let me, let me do the Business and Financial Times and then uh, Ajira is still very much on my heart, so we'll talk about Ajira. Yeah, yeah. uh, front page of the Business and Financial Times, NPRA retrieves 6 million Ghana cities from recalcitrant employers, targets 40% pensions coverage by 2026. Informal sector struggling to adapt to new normal as sector's recovery is still below pre-pandemic levels. Uh, total vehicle sales declined by 17% in 2020, according to a Stambik Bank research. I mean, it was a tough year uh, in 2020. I'm not sure a lot of people would have bought vehicles. Even if you did and you were using a loan, you didn't have cash to buy. You'll be thinking about how to pay back. So I'm not surprised that uh, vehicle sales went down by 17% in 2020 all right uh that's it really for the business and financial times but joseph you asked me what stories i wanted to highlight i want to stay a little while with the big business and financial times uh the pension situation the fact that the mpra says it's retrieved six million ghana cities from recalcitrant employers uh, but i've been thinking eh, joseph it's not just about employers paying pension right it's also the amount that they pay because a lot of businesses have become really smart so they're channeling a lot of the payment to uh you know other benefits that they don't have to pay taxes on or you know take pension out of and i think that if we're not careful as individuals as people who work for other businesses when we retire we'll suffer a great deal I think you are being very diplomatic about what you are saying. I mean, the point you are making is that, so assuming you are supposed to be paid 1,000 cities as your take home so that they pay pensions on the 1,000 cities, what the businesses do now is that they are actually going to put on record that your salary is 700 cities, mm -hmm. while the 300 cities becomes allowances, mm -hmm. which means that they are not going to pay tax 
on the 700, neither would they, they will not pay tax on the 1,000, neither would they pay pensions out of the 1,000, rather it will be calculated using the 700. Workers tend not to complain because they are getting 1,000 anyways, but what they are losing out on is that the state is losing money by the way of the income tax supposed to be raking, aside from the fact that your own pensions contribution you are enjoying now, but it's lesser than it ought to be. And so it's something that, I mean, employees generally need to be concerned about and discuss it when your employer decides to increase your salary and is hiding it off us and passing it off to you as allowances. They, they have all kinds of descriptions for it these days. They can call it golden allowance, they can call it full allowance, they can mm -hmm. call it all sorts of allowances that essentially should actually be your salary adjustment that you have actually negotiated with them. And so it robs you of the comfort that you will enjoy when you are done working after many years. Absolutely. And I don't know how we can fix that because SNIT as it, as it is now can't do anything about that. We need a certain law. I don't know. What, what, what do we need to get businesses? Or is it for us to say, oh, listen, they put clothing allowance there, but that's not real. It's just a channel and avenue so that they can pay less pension. I mean, I think we should take it up with the employers. Uh, I believe it should be an employee's desire to deal with that. And, and I say so because a lot of the time, those adjustments are done when you've had discussions with your employer about salary adjustments. You want your salary to go up. You are not asking for fresh allowances. If you ask for fresh allowances, they are different thing. Either way, it's still money that if it's given to you as a bulk, you still buy the clothes from the salary anyways. You don't use the money that is specifically for the allowance to just buy the clothing or for the floor or all those things. And so we should have that kind of negotiations because when you are working now, what we need to understand, and a lot of the time, employers, uh, employees don't get that point, is the fact that you will not have the strength to work your entire life. So you are working now for now and for the future. And so your negotiation should be about the now and the future, not just about the now. Yeah. The future is very important. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, the issue about Ejira, uh, Akable, I'll leave you so that you can also touch on what you want to highlight. I mean, I think the Ejira issue is, is, is still of interest to me. I've already seen some comments that uh, suggest that people are not happy with the ministerial inquiry. Uh, I, I prefer uh, the ministerial inquiry to the commission of inquiries that we've set up over the period. Because, I mean, as we, we, we saw in Iowa, so West Ogun, and even before then, uh, the Ghana Art 50 Commission of Inquiry, where the state, after the report had been issued, attempted to prosecute some individuals like Charles Rekubobe and Kwame Pienim for causing financial loss to the state. The court clearly took the view that that could not happen because the findings of the Commission of Inquiry were just like the findings of a high court. And so that terminates the matter. The best the state can do is to appeal it. And so punishment really is not severe. That is how come people like double, even though government rejected the findings of the commission and asked that they should die as well so gone. The police service will also go ahead with some form of investigation. Nothing has really happened. And so I hold the view premised on this, the decision of the courts that commissions of inquiries does not lead to punishment of individuals. Someone has been shot, someone has been killed, someone needs to be prosecuted for murder. We will not get that from a commission of inquiry so properly constituted. But on the other hand, what we do with any such inquiry like the ministerial inquiry is that facts are unraveled, which we know that this person shot this person. He didn't have the justified basis to have fired those shots. And so what has happened there is we, manslaughter we are looking at or is it murder we are looking at. And so we can now power pressure for the relevant state agencies to now prosecute those individuals. And so I prefer this measure as against the commissions of inquiry that we set up over the period. But I agree with the general concern that the, should the Minister of Interior be the one who will be leading this? Mm. Well, others say that he's a minister. He has every right to look at the agencies within him. Yeah, but the police is under him. Uh, the other issues unresolved also happened under him, uh, whether in the first administration of the president's or this second one. And he, has he been accountable? Has he answered the necessary questions? Have we seen him bring persons, uh, uh, bring or brought closure to the issues? He hasn't. So do we have I mean, confidence? To be fair, Do I have I remember that some, he's the a couple best of years back under this? this administration? If you remember the Zongo 7 shooting in, 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 it happened in, in Kumasi. Kumasi, they shot mm -hmm. seven people. The police put out quite a fanciful narrative about how the people had engaged them. Just in before you continue, let me before you continue, let me just refresh the memories uh, of, our, of our listeners. They actually lined them up and they displayed guns and told us that they were robbers, and this was what they had used in carrying out. The operations continue. 
Absolutely. Now the a commission, in fact, I want a committee, not a commission, because I, I, a commission, a committee was set up with some judges of the courts among some individuals asked to prove. He came to the conclusion that these are individuals, the arms that were displayed, they don't belong to them. They were just shot at point blank range, killed. And huge sums of money was awarded against the state. But then again, you realize nothing happened against the security officers who had carried out the act. And that is where the concern still comes. These are officers who have simply caused financial loss to the state. They've caused the state to compensate individuals because they have killed them without any justifiable basis. And so what people are looking for is an inquiry that unravels facts that leads to the punishment of those who are responsible for what happened on that day. And the interior minister, as we have him today in occupying that office, was the same interior minister then. So Absolutely. what did he do? What did we do to him? Nothing. In so... fact, he was the interior minister when the Ayahuasca West Wagon Commission found, as a matter of fact, that our security agencies are poorly equipped to handle crowd control and actually recommended that they should be trained to handle crowd control. And from the videos that we've seen, the commission again, Ayahuasca West Wagon Commission found that they were firing, they were not firing warning shots, they were rather firing into the crowd. And the videos that we took ourselves, we see a soldier bend down on the knee, point a gun towards a crowd and shoot. I mean, the, the, the video in our, our shots, we see, we, we see them there. I mean, clearly, that is not how the experts say crowds should be controlled. Absolutely. Uh, you fire warning shots, and that, that is the safest thing to do. So we see a sector minister who's supervised all these things, or who, under whose supervis uh, supervision we've seen all these things happen. And now we're supposed to have confidence that he is leading a probe into a situation with officers right under his ministry. I mean, that doesn't give hope, does it? Not at all. I mean, it, it leaves little to be desired, uh, but that, that is the least we, we've been offered for now. And so it's supposed to be a public inquiry. We are all going to look out for it. Uh, depending on what steps government takes after the findings are issued, we also have the opportunity to comment on all those things. But I mean, clearly the videos that we are seeing, so you see the soldier in that shot, they're pointing a gun over there. I mean, it's not anything that you see. He goes down on the knee right in that video and he's shooting. He's just shooting. You don't, you don't do that. I mean, it's, it's so worrying. It's not the very best. And we don't want to see this. We want to see you fire up in the sky to disperse the crowd. And even you could see from the video that we are watching that when they were firing the warning shots, the people were running away. And now we have to rush people into medical facilities. And we also had the issue of no bed syndrome even cropping up when they got into the facility there. You know, the other thing that doesn't give me hope is the fact that we had a whole commission of inquiry. So what the commission of inquiry did, and you've been going through particularly with crowd control. So if we couldn't learn the lessons then, we didn't do anything with it then, what gives us the confidence that we will do anything with it now? We don't even need a probe in terms of crowd control. We already have one that happened. All we need to go is to just go back to those recommendations. We've done very little with those recommendations, and here we are with another probe. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, it's, we're just going around in circles. It doesn't resolve our issues, and we keep doing it. Anyway, I guess we wait to see. Ten days uh, he's been giving to do this. Uh, but we wait to see what happens with it. That's all we can do, right? So let's just uh, run through myjoyonline.com. In the meantime, uh, for those of you who haven't seen the Hawa Kumsin, the fisheries minister's uh, video, here it is. <laughs> Okay, if you're not Ghanaian, you probably won't understand this. I only got to understand it yesterday. That's a, uh, the minister symbolically closing the sea for the first season. What it means is you can't go fishing. Is that it, Joseph? Am I even getting it right? Yeah, you're absolutely right. So there's a period from now till August where, before you, you can, it will now be open. So I guess there will be another ceremony for <laughs> to open. open. <laughs> So for the, the month of July, the sea is closed. 
Uh, yes. If if you don't know, we're telling you the the minister yeah, has I mean, closed the, the sea. The scientists recommend that 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 it's more or less like a fallow period of sorts, so that we don't harvest too much and finish up all our fish stock. And so sometime in August, we'll look forward to uh, that big ceremony where it will be open for our fisher folk to have the freedom of going out to fish. <laughs> is it that we play too much or <laughs> this is all tradition and culture? <laughs> Maybe when the people see the lock in this time around, they'll respect it more than they did in the past when uh, they didn't have this kind of lock in. But this is the beautiful, beautiful scene. I mean, our own how comes in locking it up. <laughs> Oh my God! Well, at least she's got the support of. Uh, but the she didn't. She didn't turn the key fully. We should watch the video again. I mean, oh, we should watch it again. So the this door, is half I don't locked. think the door has been locked properly. So it's half because locked. Because now, really, when you are locking, you have to lock it twice. <laughs> she turned it, and it was sideways. It didn't even get to the end. No, it's a security door. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just quickly run through myjoeline.com before we make way. Uh, for sport. My mask is not staying today. Some of the, the mask, the hands are like too long. You know, you have to tie it. Yeah, this one is better. Myjaronline.com, Edgira Kellens, Ambrose Derry is a person of interest, Commission of Enquiry, the way to go uh, according to security analysts. So uh, this is Mr. Norman, uh, who, says, who says that, listen, the Interior Minister himself, he needs to answer questions. So now that he's leading this, uh, you know, it's, it's just, uh, that's Dr. Ishmael Norman, by the way. Uh, he is a, he heads an institution. I just want to bring that. He heads the Institute for Security of Disaster and Emergency Studies. Uh, and he's added his voice to calls for a full-blown commission of inquiry into the killing of two civilians at Ejira in the Ashanti region on June 23. So he's rooting for a commission of inquiry and not the probe. Uh, that has been instituted, if you like, the direction from the presidency. But Joseph disagrees with that, by the way. Uh, minority rejects Ekufuado's call for ministerial inquiry. There you go. Government slapped with $15 million uh, judgment debt over unlawful seizure of excavators. Uh, there are different angles of a giraffe on our website, myjoeonline.com. But suspected killers of slain in Fantiman MP jail 20 years. Police CID making that revelation yesterday. Uh, and then on the, well, there's the minority, there's also the majority on the Ejira. On the 2021 census, one census enumerator dead, another injury, uh, injured in accident. Uh, so they were, oh God, hmm. Really, really unfortunate. We want a lot of people to get involved in the counting exercise. You have to be counted. But this is an unfortunate incident of two enumerators who were on their way to carry out their work. And then uh, there was this station track. So if you look at the, the headline, it comes with a picture. That's the station track that they just drove straight into. They were on a motorbike. Uh, and then one person died on the spot, according to details of that story. NCC calls for in-depth investigation into a giraffe killings as well. Joseph? What are we following today? Um, there's this uh, matter regarding uh, Dr. Stephen Opuni, the former Cocoa Boy CEO. Yeah, he, he, he wrote a petition to the Chief Justice asking that Justice Onyanuga recuses himself after a number of attempts had failed. And so we expect that today at least we'll get some indication from the Chief Justice Office about what should have been going forward. But on the census, I was I was enumerated or counted yesterday. Oh, you were. By the census officials, yeah. Were you home? Did they come? Did they come to meet you? Yeah, I was home. I was home when they came, just before the rains, and it was it's not easy. A lot of questions for me. How how long did it take? It took about um, 10, 15 minutes, and even the 10, 15 minutes is because, I mean, she allowed like she made a tablet, she opened it up, so we're more or less like we. I was just reading and just taken taken like okay. electronically so it was a bit faster okay as against so you can imagine for people that she would have to read and explain before they decide which option to take it's a, a lot of questions a lot of questions actually like a lot well, if it was a questionnaire trust me i'm sure i'll not feel it <laughs> you've done your patriotic duty as a citizen of ghana you availed yourself to be counted so congratulations to you and I guess thank you made, you, the, you, made you, the work you. easier for the enumerator as well. They haven't visited yeah. me, but I'm looking forward to being counted. 
Yeah, if that will lead to fixing my road and uh, the, the that stretch not getting flooded, especially towards the toll booth. And I'm talking about the toll booth uh, before Kutunsi. That place is terrible. Mm -hmm. So, Joseph, let me confess. When I got to the toll booth and the lady opened the window, I had not rolled down. I was thinking, should I pay the toll or not? Like, seeing the situation <laughs> that I'd come out of. Honestly, I was there for a little while and she didn't put any pressure on me. Maybe she figured out I was trying to. And then I said, okay, listen, I need to do this. So I paid the toll. I was seriously yeah. contemplating not paying because the road is terrible. It's, it's very frustrating. I yeah. mean, paying every day and seeing the road the same. Absolutely. Joseph, thank you very much uh, for doing the review with me. That's Joseph Akable. Uh He's usually our court correspondent. And that's the review this morning. You can log on to myjoinline.com where we have plenty of headlines for you. But we have to make way for Muftal. He's bringing us details of the ongoing euro. Uh, there's talk of our local league as well. There's Wimbledon also happening. And uh, I told you, the English players, whether it's football or it's tennis, they're just overrated. And Nimori comes back and he's making all the headlines. He's got details of all the games. Stay with us.